How's it going guys? Today we're going to be learning how to drag 2D sprites in Godot. Let's hop right into it. Inside of a new project here, we can make a brand new 2D scene. I'm going to name this scene level, save it, and then I'm going to press F5 to set it as my default scene. So now when I run the game, this will be the scene that shows up. I'm going to add a child node of sprite 2D. I'm going to give it the basic icon.svg texture so that we have something to look at and I'm going to just drag it towards the middle of our scene here and then rename this child node to draggable sprite because it's going to be our draggable sprite. We're going to want to be able to reuse this so let's make it its own scene. So we're going to right click it and click save branch as scene. That way we can just add more scenes if we want to have more draggable sprites which you probably will in your program. Inside of this new scene let's attach a script to it. And at the very top, we're going to create a variable called isDraggable and set that equal to false. This is just going to be used to manage its state to know if we can drag it or not. We're going to create another variable called mouse offset, which is going to be used to center the mouse based on where we click it, which you'll understand more as we get into it. We're also going to need a physics process function. We can just pass in that for now. And we're going to need an input function. Inside of this input function, what we can say is if event is input mouse button, so one of the mouse buttons was clicked, and event button index equals mouse button left, so also it was the left button, then we're going to do some stuff. So we're going to say if event pressed, print down. But if the event is not pressed, so for in this case it would be releasing it, we're going to say up. So if we run this, we should be printing down when we click the left mouse button and up when we release it. So if I do a couple clicks, it seems to be working. And if I hold it here, it says down for a while and perfect. It doesn't say up until we let go. So it's working really well. What we need to do now is we need to figure out if when we're clicking, we're actually clicking on that sprite or if we're just clicking somewhere random within the game. We can do that by saying if git underscore rect dot has point and then inside of this we are going to pass it to local event dot position and i'm going to explain what this means in a second but for now let's just print out clicked on sprite so that you can see it working so if we run it again you'll see that when we're clicking around the area we're just getting up not any kind of indication that we're clicking on the sprite just being <clears throat> just being told that we're releasing our click however when we actually click on the sprite it does tell us that we are clicking on the sprite so it's working which is awesome but how is it working well basically what we're saying here is we're getting the event position which is the position inside of the game that we're clicking because ultimately what we're looking at is a mouse click so when it's pressed it says where is the event position and what we're doing before that is we're getting the rectangle which is the whole area of our sprite and this is working here because the get rect function is returning the position and the size of our node or a rectangle which it is a rectangle in our case but it wouldn't always be necessarily and we're seeing if inside of this rectangle, it has the same point that the event position is. Now that we know when the sprite is being clicked on, we can set is dragging equal true when it's clicked. And inside of the physics process, we can say if is dragging is equal to true. Well, we want to drag it, obviously. So what we're going to do here is create a tween. For those of you who have never used tweens or don't know what they are, um, I don't want to get too into it because it could really be a whole, whole video, but uh, it, basically in a simple way of saying it, but in a simplified version, it's basically just a way to interpolate or gradually kind of go from one position to another. So you're going to give it two points and it's going to make that animation and it's going to do it in a smooth way. We can't just pick something up in one spot and have it reappear in another spot, we want to very slowly and gradually drag it to that spot. And that's basically what tween is going to do for us here, but we only have to give it those two positions. We can create a tween by saying git tree dot create underscore tween.
and we're just going to be making one really simple animation here. So we're going to say tween dot tween underscore property. We're going to pass ourself, which is our current node, the draggable sprite. We're going to want to alter the position. We're going to want to get the global mouse position because that's where we want to go to. And then we're going to pass how long we want it to take. So to make this easy, I'm going to make a delay variable and we'll just multiply that by delta. So up at the top, we can say var delay equals, and I don't know how long I want to do. So let's do 10. So let's also set is dragging equal to false here so that when we release it, it stops dragging. And if we run that, you'll see there's a pretty solid delay here, which might honestly be what you want, depending on how you want it to look, right? You could make it look like a really smooth animation with it being a little slow like this. It might work really well in your game, but you also might want something faster. So all you have to do is make that delay a smaller number if you want it to be faster, and it'll do just that. The next thing that I want to do is set up this mouse offset, which is totally an unnecessary step. If you're happy with the way it is, you can just leave it like this. But I want to take the mouse set into account for mine. And what that is is basically I want to take into account where the mouse is positioned in comparison to our sprite when we are grabbing it. So we can do that by saying mouse underscore offset equals get global mouse position minus global position and then when we pass in that global mouse position up at the top we're going to be subtracting it by this offset each time and this is just going to keep our offset in place. So you'll see you here, we're grabbing it in the corner. It's staying in the corner. It's not forcing it to be in the center. That's because it's remembering where the offset was when we originally grabbed it, even though we're moving it around. But again, this is a totally additional step and not necessary by any means. All right. And the last thing that I would say we can do is adjust the delay up here. I'm going to start out by doing a really big one. Let's make it 200. And as you'll see, this is just kind of ridiculous. It's not really useful. Maybe if we were making a game that involved ice and moving slow on it. But it, uh, yeah, it really just doesn't help us here. So I'm going to do it a little faster too. I'm going to reduce this down to 0.2. That's pretty fast, pretty smooth. Might be a little too fast, but you can adjust this and play around with it and find what really works for you uh, that's going to be it for this video hopefully you found it interesting and you found it helpful if you did please let me know i hope you have a great day take it easy